video is all about Minikube, a fantastic tool that lets you run Kubernetes right on your computer. This means you can learn and develop for Kubernetes without needing a complex setup. I'm going to use the official documentation for Minikube. I'll provide the link in the description. There are different options for getting started. I'm using a Mac Mini M2 Pro, so I'll be selecting the options here in step one for my Mac machine. So I'm going to select Mac OS, ARM64, Stable, and Homebrew. However, before I go ahead and start with this installation, let's take a quick look at what are some of the prerequisites. They recommend a machine that has two CPU cores or more, two gigs of free memory, and 20 gig of free storage, and an internet connection. Uh, they also recommend you have some kind of container or virtual machine manager, such as Docker, Kimu, HyperKit, KVM Parallels, Podman, VirtualBox, or VMware. I'm going to be using Docker Desktop. If you're not using Docker, you can go ahead and skip my Docker setup. So here we are on the official Docker documentation on how to install Docker Desktop on a Mac. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Docker desktop for Mac with Apple Silicon. Now that I've downloaded Docker, I'm going to go ahead and run it. To install Docker desktop on Mac OS, you simply drag the Docker icon into Applications. Now that it's finished, go to Applications, and I can see it here in my list of applications. Open it, click Finish. I'm going to enter my password. At this point, you'll be prompted to either sign up or sign in for Docker. Click on continue without signing in. Hopefully that's not a problem. Uh, it makes you go through this survey here. And we can see down here it says engine is running. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. It'll still leave Docker running in the background though. And I'm going to go back to my instructions over here. So let's go ahead and go through step one. Again, I'm on Mac OS with ARM uh, or Apple Silicon, as they call it. I'm selecting the stable release, and I'm going to use Homebrew to install it. So line one here says, Brew install Minikube. Now I can type it up, or I can be lazy and just go ahead and copy and paste. OK, looks like my installation is done. Uh, it does give you instructions in case you get a failure. Uh, I didn't get a failure in the install, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to step two here. And it's, this is how to start your cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and click copy, paste it over here, and run it. And what it's doing right now is it's downloading all the prerequisite images that are needed for this version of Minikube. And it's downloading all these images to my local machine so that it can then instantiate running containers that are needed to run uh, Minikube. And if you notice at the end here, it says done. Cube Cuddle is now configured to use Minikube cluster and default namespaces by default. So let me clear my screen. So step three says, uh, interact with your cluster. If you already have kubectl, which we do, you saw right there in the last screen, installed, uh, you can now use it to access your shiny new cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this command, paste it over here, run it, and here we can get a status of our, our running pods. So down here it says that initially some services such as storage provisioner may not yet be in a running state. This is normal uh, during cluster bring up uh, and will resolve itself momentarily. For additional insight into your cluster state, Minikube bundles the Kubernetes dashboard, allowing you to easily acclimate uh, to your new environment. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's see what it gives us. And here we are. It opens up a page over here. And this is the dashboard that the documentation mentions. So the sections here are workloads, service, config and storage, cluster, custom resource definitions, settings. 
So let's go back to the instructions over here. Now we're on step four, deploy applications. It says here, create a sample deployment and expose it on port 8080. So we're gonna go ahead and copy these commands. Uh, let me close out of this uh, dashboard. So I'm gonna hit Control C. And you'll probably see that the dash, I don't know if the, yeah, it kills the dashboard. So when you do that, just know that the Kubernetes dashboard will, uh, or the Minikube dashboard will get uh, killed. So let's go ahead and uh, once again, go back over here, copy the command, paste it into our prompt. And it says here that uh, deployment.apps, hello Minikube created, service hello-minikube exposed. Uh, let's copy this. It says it may take a moment, but your deployment will sh soon show up when you run kubectl get services hello Minikube. So let's go ahead and copy that paste it over here and what do we get here it says uh, name is hello minikube type node port cluster IP external IP and port 8080 and the age is 24 seconds okay it says here the easiest way to access this service is to let minikube launch a browser for you uh, and what it does is is it runs the command minikube service hello minikube so let's go ahead and copy that, paste it in here to our terminal, hit enter. And there is our sample application. It says opening service, default hello minikube and de default dashboard. Because you're using Docker driver in, on Darwin, the terminal needs to open, needs to be open to run it. So here is that application. And you'll see here that it's saying it gives you the information on the application that's running. And then it says that it's starting a tunnel for starting a tunnel for service hello dash minikube. So it's tunneling traffic uh, for the exposed port 50256 here and redirecting to the internal uh, running application. All right, let's go ahead and uh, control C out of this. Uh, if I refresh over here, it's no longer available. All right, let's go to step five over here. It says manage your cluster. Pause Kubernetes without impacting deployed applications. So you can run Minikube uh, pause, and then you can unpause it. You can halt the cluster by typing in uh, Minikube stop. Uh, you can change the amount of memory that the cluster uses. You can browse add-ons. You can create another cluster. And you can delete all Minikube clusters. So let's let's try some of these out. Let's do Minikube pause. Let me clear the screen here so it's more clear what we're doing saying uh, pausing known Minikube, paused 18 containers in Kube system, Kubernetes dashboard, storage cluster, and Istio operator. Uh, so now if we go back over here and we say unpause, it should bring that all back. And basically it's unpausing all the same things. I'm kind of interested in this uh, Minikube uh, add-ons list. So let's go ahead and go there and click copy paste it into the terminal. And here we're given a list of add-ons that we can use with this Minikube cluster. Things such as Ambassador, Dashboard, Helm, Istio, and various other things. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. The intention of this video was just to get started with Kubernetes on your local machine using Minikube. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for joining and until the next time.